Hello, today is Sunday, January 28th, 2018. I've got a message to deliver, and I know that I'll probably get some personal insults. That's That goes with the, the territory of uh, somebody who's chosen not to be one of Jehovah's Witnesses, because they do not accept the teachings of the governing body who actually are now in a uh, apostate position and Jehovah's Witnesses are an arm of the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society there are many legal entities that Jehovah's Witnesses and Watchtower Bible and Tract Society are connected with. Jehovah's Witnesses can do their research on that. There's lots of information. But I wanted to talk about the power of the corporation. I'll leave a link in the description box about or to the documentary, The Corporation. And about that, Jehovah's Witnesses uh, have become a very large and powerful corporation in conjunction with the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. The Watchtower in itself is not a religion. They're con considered a printing corporation uh, and publishing company. Thus, the reason why Jehovah's Witnesses are called pioneers, publishers, other uh, names to connect them to a business. And when I was young, I did not understand this. I was born, essentially born into the organization my mother was baptized when I was two, and my father was baptized when I was ten. I've got five, well, there's five children in my family. I've got three sisters and one deceased brother. He was the middle child of the five of us. So myself and my older sister have a, had a younger brother and my younger sisters had an older brother. Um, the reason why I'm describing the dynamics of my family is because it's important to know the damage that a religion can bring on the family unit. And if the family unit is part of a corporation, or at least dictated by the corporation, then when one of the family members passes away, it's a very serious, it has a very serious impact on the whole family. And The network of a corporation is similar to a family. So, because of uh, the religion that is chosen by the parents and the children are forced into it, forced to be slaves of it, and slavery being a violation of human rights, um, freedom of religion being a human right, freedom to choose, the right to life, essentially the foundation of the family and human rights, and of the corporation as well. The corporation is recognized as a person 
you'll understand that when you watch the link, or you connect to the link uh, that I've enclosed in the description box, the corporation. So it is important that children not be forced to decide any anything before they're of legal age. And the complications and implications that come from forcing anybody to do anything is very serious. The governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses, Jeffrey Jackson as a member, spoke at the Australian Royal Commission. I'll leave a link to that as well. And he perjured himself on the stand at the Australian Royal Commission when he said that Jehovah's Witnesses do not accept corporal punishment. And he personally does not accept corporal punishment or abuse of children at all. I understand from the questioning. Jehovah's Witnesses did, in fact, accept and practice corporal punishment to the extreme. I know I'm a victim and survivor. I watched it in my family my younger brother and sisters, and my older sister. I watched it and tried to, ex ex tried to protest the violence. My parents were victims of the Watchtower Corporation, also known as Jehovah's Witnesses religion. Jehovah's Witnesses uh, can be identified as a cult and they are extreme violators of human rights. I want you, if you are a Jehovah's Witness or a former Jehovah's Witnesses, to explore the, re the answer to the questions that I'm going to pose. Why was education prohibited, further education prohibited even? for Jehovah's Witness children. Why were blood transfusions prohibited? Why were organ transplants prohibited? Why were children of Jehovah's Witnesses forbidden to associate with children their own age in schools and other worldly um, groups. Why were Jehovah's Witnesses punished at school for being Jehovah's Witnesses? Why was corporal punishment pro accepted and encouraged and practiced in schools? I'm from Ontario, Canada. It was very much a part of the curriculum. There are many victims, survivors, and victim uh, dead people. <laughs> Not funny. Dead victims and live victims of the education system in Canada. the religious system in Canada, the Commonwealth over Canada. The Charter of Rights and Freedoms was only signed in 1982 in Canada. The provinces have not kept up and are not equal to the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, Ontario being one of them. There is much violence of the First Nations people in Canada, Northern Ontario, 
Saskatchewan, all throughout Canada. The Governor General, David Johnson, he just stepped, stepped down. He said that Canada was a social experiment. He said and had to retract his statement that the First Nations of Canada were immigrants from 14,000 years ago. He said that. First Nations children were killed. First Nations families were split up and destroyed. Their religious beliefs were destroyed. The Commonwealth elites were responsible for that, and the government accepted it. And think about the, the responsibility that the governments have, the leaders of the governments, the leaders of the provinces, the mayors. How about the mayors? They essentially have more power than the head of the state, of the country, to save the lives of people in their communities. There is such a, a, there is such a, a preventative measure in place for victims, survivors, to seek just legal recourse in Canada and other countries, I understand. But Australia has taken a stand for people, the lives of people, the lives of children, the suffrage of children and women. Um, I want to continue the, this discussion but these questions you need to answer honestly for yourself whether you're accepting Jehovah's Witnesses as nice people many of them are nice people But Jehovah's Witnesses are under undue influence to the extent that they will reject their own children. The, be the, the, the beliefs of their own children, the reasonings of their own children. The rights of their own children. They're willing to see them die on an operating table or in some sort of accident, some sort of mishap. They're un under undue influence to the extent that they will accept to relinquish their own children's lives and even their own life, leave children behind, babies behind because they don't respect life enough. They will give you the reasoning that if they are faithful to God, God will resurrect them. But I will propose this reasoning. Why did Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead? Why did Jesus speak to the Pharisees I'm going to use the Hebrew scriptures and the Greek scriptures. Reasoning. Why did Jesus reason with the Pharisees when he was speaking about the Sabbath and ask them if they would not rescue their animal from falling into a, a hole on the Sabbath? because 
he valued life. The Israelites and Hebrews were to value life. The Jewish people in our present time value life. They don't reject blood transfusion or organ transfusion as medical treatment. Even they accept it. We have to come to an understanding that life is valuable. Life is important, even this one, especially this one, because this is the time that we have to speak for those who cannot speak, for, to speak for those who have died based on incorrect understanding and violations of human rights. The United Nations, who Jehovah's Witnesses have been against for many decades, and of which Jehovah's Witnesses registered as a non-governmental organization with in the past and currently. Do your research. They're still recognized as a non-governmental organization and against the United Nations. The United Nations have been coming together to establish an organized and comprehensive understanding of what human rights are. And one of them is a right to life. The government of Canada and the province of Ontario have accepted that people have a right to death. All people, not just seriously uh, ill people. So now Canada, or the country that we call Canada, who is not a sovereign nation anymore, look up the North American Union, it's a charter for Canada, United States and Mexico. Those, those countries, if they are in one union, need to come together and understand the power of the corporation. The corporation has legalized murder and all people have to understand that of all religions. Townships, regions, towns, provinces, states, countries have legalized murder through the corporation. The corporation has to have limited power, must have limited power, not unlimited power, unlimited power even to kill. I leave this message with you to think, to understand that the heads of your state, the heads of your province, and the heads of your country must speak for you. You have the power, the power of your voice. Jehovah's Witnesses and possibly other religions were prohibited from involvement in the government, involvement in politics. Ask yourself why. You have a voice. Not just to vote, but to speak against the government in power. If it doesn't serve you, you have to tell them. It's best to tell them in writing. Go to your member of parliament. 
Go to your member of provincial parliament. Go to your state congress and tell them that you want to live, that you don't accept the corporate charters, that people have a right to die slowly. If capital punishment has been abolished, then corporations have violated people's human rights to make them, to make capital punishment legal. Take a stand, make your voice heard. I would like to produce more videos. Thank you for your patience. I know it takes me a minute or two to communicate my message. You can speed the video up in the settings. Thank you for listening. Wishing you well. Goodbye.